Great Plains toad, Bufo cognatus, is one of the nine species of true toads that occur in Texas. It can be observed throughout two main ecoregions in Texas, the first being the plains of the Panhandle region, with the second being the arid landscape of the Trans-Pecos. It also occurs in the adjacent states of Oklahoma and New Mexico, westward to California, as well as far south as the state of Creatro, Mexico. As the natural range indicates, the habitats that this toad prefers to occupy vary from prairies and grasslands, although it can also thrive in open range, mesquite-filled pastures, and creosote flats. Man-made irrigation appears to be a key component in the habitat with which it dwells. Basically, this species can live anywhere that has loose enough soil where it can bury itself deep enough to escape the heat and drought conditions. The Great Plains Toad is a robust amphibian that has dry, wart-covered skin. It is one of the largest toads that inhabit the state, with adult females, which are the larger sex, attaining a total body length of almost four inches. The background coloration can vary from any shade of brown to olive brown to olive gray. It usually, although not always, has a pair of distinctly bordered darker green blotches that run lengthwise along the back. More often than not, there is also a distinct white stripe that runs along the spine. Juvenile specimens will occasionally have small reddish colored bumps along the back as well. The belly coloration is off white to gray in coloration and it has no dark spots, unlike some other species of toads that occur in the same areas. The paratoid glands are the large bumps immediately behind each eye, and in this species they are oval in appearance. It is also the only species in Texas where the cranial crests converge into a V-shape near the snout. Each toe on the hind foot ends in a sharp black point, and there are two sharp tubercles at the end of each foot. The innermost tubercle is crescent-shaped. Great Plains toads, like other amphibian species, live a dual life. In fact, the word amphibian itself means double life. When the spring and summer rains begin, males of this species will congregate at shallow pools to begin to attract a mate. This attraction consists of calling in short, high-pitched, trill-like bursts. When just one or two males are calling, the noise is nothing more than background noise. However, when a large group begins to call in a chorus, the noise can almost be deafening. Once a male successfully attracts a mate, they engage in the process of externally fertilizing the eggs. This process is known as amplexus. During this time, a male will wrap his forelegs around the receptive female and as she lays her eggs, he will fertilize each individual one as it exits the female's body. A tremendous amount of eggs may be laid each breeding season, with nearly 20,000 at one time being reported, and the number of sessions may vary from two to three annually to once every two or three years. Breeding is all based upon sufficient rainfall, for the eggs are often laid in shallow, non-permanent pools of water that dry up just after a few sunny days accompanied with unbearable heat. The life cycle of the Great Plains toad continues as the fertilized eggs hatch into tiny dark tadpoles. These tadpoles are often referred to as polywogs. They are fish-like in appearance, and they obtain their oxygen from the water through their gills. Within a day or two after hatching, they begin a miraculous metamorphosis where the lungs begin to develop, while at the same time, back legs begin to form on their bodies. Within the next day or two from then, front legs also begin to appear, and the tail begins to shrink, the lungs continue to develop, and the back legs become larger. This process continues for about a week after hatching, when the tiny, tiny toadlets have completed their change, looking like tiny replicas of the adults, thus beginning their second life. This species is highly nocturnal, and it feeds on large amounts of insects when moisture levels are at sufficient level to prevent desiccation. Therefore, they are beneficial to agriculturally based ventures such as crops or gardens. Many myths surround toads, and the most common tale is the notion that toads cause warts on people if handled. This is not true, of course, but rather the secretions that are present when a toad is handled are either the poison from the paratoid glands or urine as the toad is frightened. The poison of the Great Plains toad is not harmful to humans, but it can cause yard animals such as dogs or cats to froth at the mouth. So the next time you see a Great Plains toad, fear not, for you do not have to run to your local drugstore to buy any wart cream. Hot soap and water or hand sanitizer will do just fine.